Am I bad for you? He is bad for Kim, but it is her own fault. She keeps letting him back in, and some part of her that we don't know, which is her past, it's clear that she even finds it familiar. To me, this is Jimmy growing up in a certain way. He's seeing her as a person independent of him, and it's only happened because he's worried that she's in danger. <laughs> if anything happens to her. <laughs> Saul feels very clueless and pushed around by circumstances and by the grander scheme at play here. Lalo Salamanca is going to die tonight. I think Mike probably even surprises himself by telling Jimmy about Lalo's impending demise. In that moment, Mike takes pity on Jimmy. You know, these two are sort of kindred spirits. They go through so much this season. On some level, I think they feel stuck together by the universe. So that allows you to be a little more honest. You gotta listen to me. The man needs help. Howard, I know Jimmy, and you're wrong. The scene between Howard and Kim is really a tough one because Howard's right. I'm really the only other one who knows what the reality is. Howard, he's thrown and he's surprised and he's concerned. He thinks he's doing the right thing. He's trying to warn her. It's one last act of goodness that he can do with this whole sordid episode. You know who really knew Jimmy? Chuck. That conversation with Howard is kind of what shoves her over into finally admitting that she is in the game and she does want to be in the game. Hey, don't think I don't see you, eh? I see you. I do. Lalo has come to the conclusion that his problem is that he doesn't have trustworthy people working for him. And Nacho is the natural choice. Nacho has proven himself. Lalo's like, all right, listen, you play your cards right, you might end up running this place one day, you know? But Nacho has to pass a test. ¿Qué es lo que quieres tú? Quiero tomar mis propias decisiones, seguir mi propio camino. Nacho is strangely honest with Don Eladio. It's probably for one of the first times in the whole series where he actually truly says who he is and what he wants. Finally, he feels, you know, thank God I'm free, I made it out. But he's not out of the fire yet. The one thing that Nacho's not counting on, Gus isn't counting on, and even Mike's not counting on, is that Lalo is tricky, he's lucky, he's smart, and he's able to triumph against incredible odds. They went into his home, you know? That's unacceptable. Basically, Lalo's going to settle some scores, you know? Or, 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 um, we pour a barrel of chlorine into his swimming pool, so then... It bleaches his hair and his eyebrows yeah. and everything. <laughs> yes, and the eyebrows. <laughs> At the end of the episode, Kim and Jimmy are having fun together. Frankly, it feels like their honeymoon finally has arrived. What if Howard does something terrible? Bribing witnesses, something like that. You know what that'd mean for the sandpiper case? This is the thing they do. They start playfully thinking of scams, and Kim gets a little bit more serious than Jimmy's expecting. To see her suggest to Jimmy such a dark turn is chilling. The Jimmy-Kim relationship is a very erratic ride of who's reading who and who's reading who correctly. When are they on the same page? When are they on different pages? And it is ultimately a drive towards who are these people really? Who are the masks that both of them at this point put on? Kim, doing this, you would not be okay with it. Not in the cold light of day. Wouldn't I? She's really transformed in this season the way that Jimmy transformed last season into Saul Goodman. What does this mean? Where is she headed? Are there any boundaries? It's further than I ever imagined she would go. Pew, pew.